Hey guys, this is going to be part 3 of the survival series of tutorials which I've been showing you to work through. Now hopefully this one is more in keeping with the time that I said I'd bring it out. I will um, hopefully actually bring out a tutorial tomorrow which will be what everybody's been after, the tree cutting because I'm ready to do that. But for this one I need to have this tutorial about importing animations and arms and controlling the player so that we can then move on to the tree cutting so it all follows along nicely. So this is going to be a, hopefully a shorter video and I'll show you how to import um, some FPS arms and control the animations with the legacy system that I've already done and I'll obviously package these up ready for you to use. So what I'm going to do is I've just created a new folder called animations and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a new asset from my desktop so I'm going to import something called FPS underscore FPS arms underscore axe at idle and now you always use this sort of prefix at idle or at sprint or at swing or at jump so that you can reference it quite easily um, and um, keep everything constant within unity and it worked with the old legacy system so I'll show you how to make this work and I'll also import sprint and I'll import swing so now what we're going to have here is we'll have all the different animations that I've created in 3ds Max I'll obviously as I say upload these files so you can edit it and have a look at it so what I'm going to do in each of these is convert the rig to legacy and hit apply because I don't want to use um, mechanism or whatever it's called and then I'll hit apply for each of them and that's what you can do if you want to follow along doing this now on the idle or on every single one what I'm going to do for my scene is scale this up to 0.05 on each of the assets so they're slightly bigger in my scene so it matches up with my first person controller now you will also want to do that yourself but you might want to judge what um, size you want it to be when you import into your scene so once we've done that we can leave everything sort of as it is and what I'm going to do is actually just drag one of these into my scene so I'll start with the idle and I'll just drag it in and what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of drag it so it's next to my first person controller and what you want to try and do is match it up with your main camera if you see your camera image there there might be a better way if anybody does have a better way of looking at the camera and having you know select another game object because if you see if I select the arms now I can't see a camera preview so it gets a little bit awkward positioning it but I'll pause this video so that you don't see me trying to reposition it in a way in front of the camera so there we go, for the sake of this I've roughly, roughly sort of placed it so there you can see it sort of floating around in the scene. Um, and obviously you can change your clipping planes, your near and close clipping planes to adjust it. I'm not really going into too much detail because obviously you can change this and mess about yourself. It's just for the ease and the speed of this tutorial. Now what you want to do with the FPS games underscore X idle is you want to parent that to the main camera so it'll always follow your main camera around so you know no, no matter where you go it'll always follow you. Now what we want to do then to be able to reference our other animations that we're going to use we want to make sure once we've clicked the actual mesh what you can do is untick play automatically because we don't want to we're going to control that via script and we're going to change this array size to 3 so we can add in the other animations that we're after so if we go to um, the idle on this side and we go into the sprint open up the sprint and what we're going to do is we're going to add that to the second slot and we're going to add swing to the third it doesn't really matter which um, side they go but it's just to show that we've got three different animations within this animation for this mesh and they're all from the same mesh because I've tested this and it works okay so now what we're gonna do is actually create the script to control each of these and this part of the tutorial will be good for anybody who's trying to import animations and use it for legacy because we're gonna actually control looping because if you try and if I go on here and you try and go to the old-fashioned way and go here to change it, the wrap mode to loop it's greyed out for some reason and I tried to research it but couldn't find anything but we can control this via script so what we're going to do is we're going to create a JavaScript and we're going to be able to create um, controller animations so what we're going to do is we're going to create this and call it player control obviously you can name this whatever you like and then what I'm going to do open up and develop and then once I've done that, what we're going to do, delete the two functions there. We'll start by writing ver private variable has axe 
type boolean equal to false and then we're going to write another private variable called can swing as type boolean equal to true now I hate when Unity keeps auto correcting, well, Mono Develop keeps auto correcting these for me. Private variable is swinging as type boolean equal to false. And then we're going to have another private variable called controller and set that as type character controller. And then another private variable called player GUI and I have that as type player GUI now has axe is going to control um, what weapon we've got so we've got an axe and while I actually care to mention the axe that you can see with the model that you've imported with the animations that's only a placeholder obviously we're going to change that then we'll have a variable for if we if we can swing because we don't want to be able to swing aimlessly we want to make sure that if we're swinging because we're going to control idle animations and swinging and if we don't control that we'll, all, we'll never be able to swing because we'll always be idling and then we're going to have controller and which is the character controller so we can tell whether we're moving or not or sprinting so then we can have a sprint animation and then we're going to play a GUI is just the script that we created in part 2 so first of all what we'll write is function start two brackets then two curly brackets below and we'll say has axe is equal to true so we've got an axe in our hand just to start off with say now we'll say controller equals game object dot find open brackets first person controller and then close the up dot get component open brackets character controller and close the up and put a semicolon then we're going to say player gui is equal to game object dot find and in quotes first person controller again close that up dot get component open brackets player GUI now you see how these differ I've got a lowercase player for the actual variable and the uppercase for the name of the script so that's okay for now now we're going to control the actual animations ourselves now we've got all those cell so now we'll say function update and then two brackets, two curly brackets below. And then what we're going to set, as I'll write a comment saying idle section. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if controller controller dot velocity dot magnitude is less than or equal to zero and and is swinging is equal to false then we'll close that up add two curly brackets make sure that this controller is a lowercase because as I say when I develop sometimes changes it when I don't want it to then we'll say that animation dot play open brackets in quotes and we'll name the animation that we're looking for so idle with a capital then add a semicolon then we'll also say animation and then we want to put in square brackets this time in quotes idle like we did we'll say dot wrap mode equals wrap mode dot loop so this is just as I said before when the bit was greyed out we're actually setting uh, the idle animation to loop every time we're not moving and we're not swinging then we'll actually I'll actually show you how to change the speed so again just like this one at the top animation in square brackets then we'll add idle again and we'll say dot speed is equal to 0 0.2 now obviously you, you can change this to whatever speed you want but 0 0.2 I thought looked okay below here we're going to be able to control sprinting and then what we're going to do is we'll say that I'll just copy this section here so if controller dot velocity to dot magnitude is greater than zero and then we'll say and and input dot get key open brackets key code dot left shift and then we'll add another bracket to close those two off 
and then we'll add two curly brackets below and that means that if the magnitude or the velocity of the character is greater than zero so if we're running and we're pressing shift so to be able to sprint we'll say that animation dot play open brackets sprint and then obviously like we did here we want it to be able to loop for as long as we're sprinting so if we paste that in and then instead of having idle we change that to sprint and we keep the wrap mode to loop then now we're going to check um, control the axe swinging so we're going to say that if has axe is equal to true and and can swing is equal to true which is the case at the top we can swing and we do have the axe at the beginning we'll say that if input dot get mouse button open brackets put zero to close those up so zero is the um, left mouse button then we'll add two curly brackets below there and we're going to actually reduce stamina from our other script so we'll say player GUI dot stamina bar display and you can see these in that other script minus equals 0.1 so it'll take off 0.1 stamina for every time we swing whether we hit a tree or not and then what we're going to do is going to talk about the swinging animations now we'll say animation dot play open brackets swing close that up put a semicolon then we'll say animation dot well animation and then as we did before in square brackets in quotes we'll put a swing then we'll change the speed because my animation was a bit slow I'll set that equal to 2 you can set it to whatever you want and whatever you feel then we'll say is swinging is equal to true and can swing is equal to false so what this means is that if we've actually pressed the left button to swing we'll take some stamina away and we'll actually make sure we play the animation at a certain speed and we'll say that we are actually we are swinging now and we can't actually swing again until we've done an actual timer so now below here what we'll do is we'll say that if can swing is equal to false close that up add two brackets then we'll say swing timer is minus equal to time dot delta time so up here we need to add another variable and call this variable swing timer as type float equal to we'll say one and then what we need to say is that when we are actually swung we're going to count down um, from one and then we'll say if swing timer is ever less than or equal to zero we'll close that up then we'll say that swing timer is equal to one so it's setting back to one again we'll say can swing is equal to true so we'll be able to swing again because it'll set the top bit back to true and then we'll say is swinging is equal to false so that just means that seeing as though that's already cooled down we're obviously not swinging anymore so we'll be able to do it again so realistically quickly go through it we've got a, a can swing on is swinging variables we're just um, referencing the um, controller so we can detect movement and our previous script for controlling our GUIs now we're saying that if we're not moving and we're not swinging we'll be just idling so we'll just sat there doing nothing if we're actually moving and we press left shift we'll be able to play the sprinting animation if we have an axe and we can actually swing at the moment and we press left click we'll actually reduce some stamina and play the swinging animations then we'll set the booleans to opposite so this means that if we can't swing anymore we're going to count down so we're going to have a little cool down and then if we ever reach zero we'll set the swing back to what it was originally and be able to do it normally again so then what you want to do is go on the model and then you want to add your player control this time because you want to be able to control it so now what we'll do is we'll play our scene and you'll notice that 
my hands are moving very, you know, s slightly for the idle. So we're idling at the moment, and you know, it'll idle forever. And if I'm moving, we'll still idle until I press shift and we'll do some sort of sprinting. Obviously, as I say, the animations are not the best. And then when we stop, we'll go back to the idle. And then if we left click, we'll do a swing of the axe and it'll go back to idle. And then what we do is it took a portion of stammer down. And even if I carry on clicking, I can't until it's cooled down. And obviously it's not the best, but obviously you can change these and it just shows you how you can control it very easily. And obviously, like I said, what we can do is in hopefully tomorrow, I'll be able to create the tree chopping. So you can use all this together to create something that you finally want to see. So hopefully this was helpful and it helped you import your animations and things. And I'll upload all this to my website. So thanks very much for watching and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.